Samuel Kaplan, and I'm hoping that this will be the beginning of good things to come among Ghanaian students resident in United Kingdom. We will make sure to make sure that Ghana will benefit from us as students. No, sir. Uh, you've done excellent work. You are not only helping yourself, not helping your community, you are helping your country. And I think together we can improve the fortunes of our country. Now you are an organization and you are actually becoming agents of transformation. So you are doing the right thing by coming together as Ghanaians, hoping to build a nation. Father Lord, we thank you this morning. We bless you for your kindness. We bless you for your goodness. The leadership of the National Union of Ghanaian Students, United Kingdom. Congratulations. It was some time last year that a couple of young people approached the mission and said they wanted to inaugurate a national union of Ghanaian students in the United Kingdom, which will be a coordinating body or an umbrella body for all Ghanaian unions of students in the United Kingdom. And as a mission, we decided that it was worthwhile that we should support them in this endeavor. Planning for today, we felt that we should have the hierarchy of education in Ghana to be here. And I'm happy that the Minister of Education has been able to make it, together with the Chief Director, Get Fund, Scholarship Secretariat. These are the entities that support Ghanaian students here who are on scholarship from the government of Ghana. But I know that presently in the United Kingdom, we have more Ghanaian students sponsoring themselves than being sponsored by government. It tells you that in Ghana, we consider education to be very, very, very important. But for me, education is meant to transform society. Hundreds of years ago, we were colonized as a people. However, what transformed our country was not the mere thought of colonialism, but missionaries who introduced formal education and formal healthcare into our country. And that's why many of us find ourselves here to further our education and to make our life for ourselves. But the purpose of our being here is not to benefit ourselves, is to transform society. So as a National Union of Ghanaian Students in the UK, I challenge you, be agents of transformation. Our president has set our country a vision, a vision of a Ghana beyond aid. Some 80, 90 years ago, when we started independent struggle in Africa. Almost all the leaders were persons we could describe as diasporas. 
who have had education in Europe and North America. And when you come to Ghana, we talk about Aborigines Rights Protection Society. Those who led that society were those who had had their education in the United Kingdom. Talk about the Bixes. All of them had had tertiary education in the United Kingdom and North America. Kenya is the same. I mean, you talk about uh, those who led the independence struggle all over Africa. So for me, when we are talking about Africa moving ahead through economic independence, the task rests a lot on those of you who have had the benefit of education in Europe and North America. Just as our predecessors transformed our country through political independence, you should be the agents of transformation. So I'm challenging you as educated people here, commit yourselves to be transformers. You've seen everything. You've rubbed shoulders with the best and brightest in the world. Let it positively affect your country. The idea of establishing the National Union of Ghanaian Students here in the UK all began some years, about two years back, and this was a collective decision between four Ghanaian students based in the United Kingdom, namely Mr. Eric Amofa of the University of Salford in Manchester, Mr. Kobi Ofori of the University of Salford in Manchester as well, Mr. Lord Cordia McMensa of the University of Strathclyde Law School in Glasgow, and Ms. Michaela Opokumensa of Edinburgh University in Scotland. That was in 2017. Aisha Nimo was welcomed to the team in 2018. She contributed heavily to Nuxa UK. The four-member team had several meetings to strategize how to the union could be explored, including approaching the High Commission with this idea to establish a union. The decision was to name the union as the National Union of Ghanaian Students Associations UK. After agreeing on the name of the union, Eric Amofa, with permission from the committee, informed Ghana's High Commissioner to UK and Ireland, His Excellency Papa Uswankuma, about the team's decision to create an umbrella organization for Ghanaian students in the UK which would help to promote the welfare and educational needs of both Ghanaian international students in the UK and UK-based Ghanaian students. He also discussed the union's intention to organize a serious event, starting with the launching of the union for which we are gathered here today. The High Commissioner welcomed the whole idea and pledged his unconditional support to make the vision come to fruition. His Excellency Papa Uswankoma requested the team to submit a proposal for considerations, and this was welcomed by the team. A first meeting with the officials of the Ghana High Commission in the UK to discuss the proposal was on 21st January 2018. This meeting was attended by Erika Mofa, Mikela Opoku Mensa, Mrs. Adoma Dennis, Mr. Addo, who is the head of trade and former head of consulate. Nuxa UK engaged very well with the then head of education, who was very committed to support the committee for the launching of the union. He retired topically, leading to having an equally ambitious and vibrant young lady in the person of Ifwa Jesiwa Gezi, who took over as the head of the education at, at the High Commission in January 2018. She has been passionate about Nuxa UK and very instrumental in this establishment. Ifwa had several meetings with the executive committee and provided needed support and guidance on behalf of the High Commission in the UK. Through her efforts, a sponsorship package from the Scholarship Secretariat of Ghana under the leadership of Mr. Kingsley Ajuman was secured to fund this maiden national conference in London. With Kobe With Kobiofori and Mikhail Opoku Mensa leaving the team, 
The remaining three committed members agreed to bring Eriwa Mahaji, the current Vice President of Education at the University of Strathclyde Students' Union, and Sebastian Arthur from the University of Cambridge also joined the committee in late 2018. Aram myself, has been very devoted to NUXA UK and NUXA Scotland, playing a role in organizing NUX Scotland, that is the National Union of Ghanaian Students in Scotland. Although there's much to be seen from Sebastian yet, I can testify of the fact that his addition to the team promises to be significant. I would like to conclude and I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the founding members, to thank the interim committee members, the general student body and all our guests present. Indeed, we can't express how much grateful we are to you for your support in coming this far. I wish to take this opportunity to thank my fellow students, my other colleagues here for the great work that they have done. Coming to this far wasn't an easy thing. We started, we struggled, we fought together, and we've achieved what we have achieved. We like your contribution. We have students from Scotland, Aberdeen, Glasgow, University of Strathclyde, Edinburgh, all the way traveling 12 hours is very. They started their journey. They started their journey 12 a.m. And they arrive here 6.30 a.m. Which is a good thing that needs commendation. We say thank you, Scotland team. I also say thank you to Midlands team, University of Nottingham, Leicester, Sheffield, Derby, and other universities across. We say thank you, they came with a 40-seater coach, whilst Glasgow came with 51-seater coach. This is Scotland, sorry. This is great, it's amazing work. It's amazing work done. We have university from Cambridge, Oxford, Portmouth, and across. We have almost 25 universities representation in this room. We want to say to you that we will work hard to make sure NUSA UK comes to stay. We will work sure to make sure that Ghana will benefit from us as students. And we will encourage our members to work hard to uplift the image of our country. Ghanaians in the diaspora serve in building bridges between their country of residence in Ghana by providing market access, source of expertise, knowledge, investment, and technology. We envision sustainable and mutual beneficial relationship between Ghana and her diaspora community for socio-economic development by efficiently harnessing, mobilizing, and steering Ghanaian resources in the diaspora for political inclusion, economic and social-cultural development. The Ghanaian diaspora is considered an ally of a strategic, an ally and a strategic resource by the government of Ghana in her development effort. It currently, it is estimated that an annual inflow of about two billion, in some circles to you here, three billion, comes to Ghana through remittances from Ghanaians in the diaspora. Our mission is achieved as an office, the diaspora affairs. Our mission is achieved through multi-stakeholder coordination approach involving Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. Ghana missions abroad, Ghanaian associations abroad, other government institutions, the private sector, non-profit organizations, and international organizations. Since the establishment of the office, we have helped so many Ghanaians, including the youth, who return home on issues such as business registration, linking them to appropriate government agencies and ministers for quicker settlement of their issues. We have supported some applicants to submit their proposals under the One District, One Factory program, 
and the National Entrepreneurship and Innovative Program. Last year, we collaborated with the management of the National Service and provided an opportunity for over 200 Ghanaians living abroad who have completed their studies and wanted to enroll on the National Service Scheme through the International Graduate National Service Program. We have also provided an avenue of opportunity for second and third generation Ghanaians who may have dual citizenship to cultivate and sustain interest in Ghana through National Service Scheme and corporate internship opportunities. In 2017, after the homecoming summit, our office recognized and identified more room for diaspora involvement, particularly with regards to diaspora youth. A youth ambassador has since then been appointed. We continue to engage the youth and to create an enabling environment that promotes and ensures effective youth engagement for our mutual benefit and to provide opportunities for social economic reconnection, reintegration, and political inclusion of our youth in the diaspora communities to contribute greatly towards the development. I call on the youth here today and beyond to come home and re-engineer the rebirth of our national vision and development and to move Ghana beyond aid. I can relate to the students who are actually here today. I flew from Ghana to the UK on the 30th of September 1990 on one Sunday rainy morning and by the next day I was registered as a master's student at the London School of Economics. And that's how the journey began and I felt very lonely. There wasn't any organization like that. There weren't many of our students around and it was really very tricky and difficult to get advice, mentoring from fellow Ghanians or even fellow Africans and you felt like you were sort of lonely in the world. And I'm really pleased to see that this organization has formed. And I'm quite sure that it's going to actually be a forum for students to be able to share and to network and actually be able to also put ideas together for the betterment of the country. Now you are an organization who will be relating to the country through a high commission. So it has become more institutional. It's not just one student on his own or on their own trying to find help here or there, working out how they can contribute back to the country and all that. Now you are an organization and you're going to be coordinating your, your things and be relating to the government and to other institutions and it's going to be a multi-stakeholder approach. As I stand here, I think that this is a historic occasion for the formation of the National Union of Ghanaian Students Associations in the UK. Anything Ghanaian and anything student in the UK falls under this umbrella. And I would encourage you to actually take this very seriously because now you are an organization and you are actually becoming agents of transformation even for the country Ghana and for Africa as a whole. Well, now you have all students, Ghanaian students in the UK connecting through NUXA to engage the country, to engage the High Commission, to engage Africa as a whole and to engage the world. And so let's use this opportunity in the very best way that we can. I am honored to address you at the launch of the NUXA UK. And I bring you warm greetings from the government and the people of Ghana. Over the years, student movements have been very instrumental in many aspects of our national life and have played inspiring roles in Ghana's history. The High Commissioner spoke about it. At various points, our university students even back home, have contributed to national life, either by physically cutting cocoa in times of stress in the country, and contributing to government policy, like even the establishment of the GET Fund itself. Such has been the spirit of selflessness and sacrifice 
which I believe Nuxa UK is trying to eliminate a loop and continue. Equally, Ghanaian students have not been afraid to speak to power and confront the government of the day over issues that they feel passionate about. And it comes no surprise that students' leaders at every time in these struggle end up in public leadership roles. So, Hakman Uzwajimai, who suffered detention under Kwame Nkrumah's regime, because he was a member of NUCS at that time and stood against Kwame Nkrumah, became a celebrated Minister of Foreign Affairs in Ghana. Now, when you look back in the public leadership roles, both sides of government, uh, uh, government and opposition, are full of past. <laughs> past student leaders. It's become like student leadership or, or students who are interested in leadership and start cutting their teeth in student affairs end up in leadership in government and in opposition. So we, we start grooming ourselves to become leaders from student activities. It's true, personally, for two years, I was a local NUCS president at KNUST, two consecutive years. I couldn't ever become a NUCS president because the elections were suspended, <laughs> because probably I was too vociferous. But I'm grateful for the skills that I acquired at that time and the opportunity to serve my fellow students. They happen to be the same students that we are either working with now or serving or serving. I also know that in the United Kingdom in particular, there has been an important cradle for grooming many young Ghanaians and Africans in leadership. In fact, when you count all the heads of state around the world, a quarter of them studied in the UK. It beats probably the next president is in this room for our future garden. And I hope that in Ghana's own case, whether it's Kwame Nkrumah, he particularly, he did not study here, he studied in America, but came to cut his politics somewhere here. <laughs> Buzia found himself here. President Kufo found himself here. President Atabils found himself here. President Akufuado found himself here. So those who are here, the pathway has been cut. And you would end up finding yourself here. And Papo Swapma taught some time back, 60 years ago, uh, Ghana served as the attraction for other African liberation struggles. And those even students here, Ghana government provided houses and places for them to live in. It's interesting that after all this while, we've come back together within ourselves to form NUCS UK. I wish to congratulate you for the feat. In those times past, it was easier to organize because we were all struggling. This time, we are having our individual struggles, so collective things are difficult to organize. And it is far, far more difficult to organize this time, even though there's a proliferation of social media than those times. So I do really congratulate you for the feat you have achieved even though people are protesting. People even feel sidelined, even though you are lunching today. It is my fervent hope and prayer that every student, and there are three categories, those who are coming on government scholarships, those who are coming on 
British government scholarships and those who are struggling on their own. Every Ghanaian or every Ghanaian who feels part of the Ghana phenomenon to be part of Luxa UK. You have demonstrated through Luxa UK that in unity lies the strength. And I'm confident that you use this formidable common position as Ghanaians to leverage on matters affecting Ghanaian students here in the UK and back home. If the scholarship secretariat boss and the get fund bosses are here, I hope we could have some 10 minutes to do question and answers. Yes. I, 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 feel the feel, I feel the pain of Ghanaian students sometimes. Because if you live in far away Aberdeen and the snow is your brother and sister when you open your windows and your allowance hasn't come, your stipend hasn't arrived and you cannot go and knock on the next door neighbor and say, Chalebi ho chere me Oh, yes. Then the leaders should make a conscious effort even though times are hard that in the prioritization of the mega budgets that you have, once you brought them on scholarship, they will be your number one priority because they are far away from home. <laughs> Students, fellow Ghanaians, invited guests, the government of Ghana, acting through my ministry, has initiated a wide range of educational reforms to transform the sector and make it more responsive and relevant to the human resource and developmental needs of our country. The shortest way between poverty and prosperity is through education. And for those who have been blessed to be in positions of trust, we have to daily be conscious of the fact that we have to use the powers at our disposal to ensure that our country is on the right pathway as far as education is concerned. So this, for you, is the beginning of a long road for your country. And I'm sure the weight of expectation and responsibility will not be lost on you. You have been called to serve, I believe, in service first. And that is what you should be doing. There's a time to serve, and there's a time to be served. If you don't learn to serve, you can never be served. Let your leadership one be one of diligence, competence, service, and empathy. Motivate your members to be good ambassadors here for our country and do her proud by excelling at your studies and abiding by the laws of the country. We would work hard that your allowances will be paid on time. I am happy, I'm happy, I'm happy that His Excellency Papa Uzan Kuma, our able High Commissioner to the AK, is a former Minister of Education himself. I assure you that we will take your issues on board. I do assure you. If I'm given the opportunity to listen to you, maybe not. And I think together, not only can we improve the quality of education in Marco, we can improve the fortunes of our country. Thank you. It is my distinguished honor and pleasure to official launch the National Union of Ghanaian Students Association United Kingdom and it is also my pleasure to invite the leadership interim leadership of the union I'm confident that you will hand over a strong and vibrant National Union 
of Ghanaian Students Association, UK. Gracious God, we give you thanks for calling us together at this time. We thank you for your grace in bringing us to this place. We thank you for the way you have guided us and brought us to this land to study. We pray you to inspire us and to bless us and to strengthen us in our work and in our ministry. May we never forget from whence we come and may we return home to strengthen the place from which we have come. We pray you to bless the land of Ghana, your people there. And we pray especially now your blessing on these five servants of yours. Strengthen them in their work. May they know your grace and your peace upon them. May they know the love of God surrounding them. And may they know that they have our prayers too. This we pray in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Projections or contribution towards students without scholarship, but who have the guests to pursue their education after what they are doing. Scholarship secretariat, there are a lot of bilateral scholarships. And what we mean by bilateral scholarships are they are funded externally by external supporters. But Ghana government has to find a way of selecting through interviews and things. And then there are other charitable sources that are helping. And we open all those avenues for everybody. Uh, I cannot say, or scholarship secretary cannot say, that since you have so much passion, come and get a certificate. No. If you apply and what you are doing fits into the national economic agenda, whether you live here or you are a Ghanaian citizen, you qualify for scholarships, and then they can support your studies if they do. We do know that uh, it has come with um, the idea of double track system. And we also know that um, due to the increase in enrollment, there's been so much pressure on infrastructure. How do you ensure that um, these children, especially in the deprived communities, do not just go and sit on the ground and in the end do not achieve the learning uh, outcomes we, we require? Let me first say for a fact that the school under tree has got nothing to do with senior high school. That means there's a system. Senior high school has not put any student under a tree. People thought the free senior high school was a gimmick. And then it had happened. Because if you don't qualify per the BEC, you don't get it. So we had a 31% improvement in BEC enrollments. It has never happened. So all of a sudden, when they get into the second year of free SHS, when we did the places available, and the number of students who could potentially find places for. There were an excess of 181,000 students who did not have a seat in the school. So I was left with two options. Behave as an ostrich and fill the 181,000 and pretend you are doing free SHS. Or find an ingenious way of letting them go to school. I hope our privilege will not dull our senses of empathy. So what did I do? I looked at the school calendar or school periods in a day. And in Ghana, those who care about education, we probably had the shortest school day. We have never complained, and we, we stayed in the country. 
And the country where those who are relatively old, when they went to school, they went in the morning, had a break, and closed in the evening. That was school in Ghana. School closed at 4.35. They went morning, 12 o'clock, they had a break, went back at 2 o'clock, and finished at 4.35. That was Ghana. When there was no infrastructure, then we brought a shift. I'm talking about basic school. So that shift, and people went 8 and closed at 12. Some went 1 and closed at 4. 4 hours, 3 hours. We didn't complain. That was the beginning of the loss of capital, human capital. Now, what have I done? I'm saying, in this country that you are, some schools run fall admissions, some schools run winter admissions. Because the classroom is already there. The tables are there. The teachers are there. And we run three terms. When we have nearly five months of staying home in the three terms. Calculate. From five hours to seven hours. That's what we have done. It meant that in a year, whereas there was 1,080 hours of contact time in the old system, in the new service that we are introducing, we will have 1,140 hours by increasing the school day. Then we could shorten the number of days in the school because we have increased their contact time. And then allow people to run when somebody else is not in school. So we started two semesters. So between the semester break, others are also utilizing the facilities in the school. So instead of going home all at once and coming back, we have sequenced the going and coming. As we speak, all first years are in school, whether the gold track or the green track, because the second years are on their normal holidays. So the classrooms can be used by first years. That is all the double track bit. And if I ask people, if people say, I don't understand, somebody should have stayed at home, if it was your brother or your sister, would you prefer the child to stay at home and let the few go to school? Answer yourself, don't answer me. I would prefer, I would prefer the system when everybody is going to school. Infrastructure, we have gone to the market to borrow $1.5 billion over three years in sequences of 500 million. Such that by the time the first years who are, in any case, the double track is only first year students. Second year students don't do double track. Third year students don't do double track. This year, we've brought them to school one month earlier so that they can get more preparations towards exams. So we want that by the time the first year students get to second year, they move from double track to single track. We have 600,000 pupils in class one. To talk about access to education, we have to create 600,000 people in first year senior high school so that everybody can get a place. Without a place at the table, don't talk about quality. You have to bring everybody to the table before you can talk about quality. Access before quality. When only 50 people can go to school out of 1,000, and they all go and get first class, you think you are developing your country. The 950 will come and steal and kill and destroy me. No, I don't want that. So let's use our God-given knowledge to analyze things. Don't not hear radio and TV and parrot it. We've borrowed 500. We can tell you every school which is part of the double track, not all schools are part of the double track. Because one fundamental thing in Ghana is about choice. Even when we're in primary school, we could choose the secondary school we want. In this country, there's no choice. If you are poor, where you live will tell you where you go to primary school. Will tell you where you go to secondary school. You don't have choice. But in Ghana, you can live in harmony when you do well, end up with Wesley Girls, Cape Coast. That is the beauty of our Ghana. It doesn't exist. And we create the opportunity for that student from Hamble Lake to Accra, if he's a girl child, to be in boarding school. Because he has no relative in Cape Coast. Here, secondary school is there because you are in the same what, community. Let's look at what is good in our system. Ghana at independence, there was no Ghana. There were four entities that were bundled together to make Ghana. There was a need for national cohesion and national unity. That is why we invented the boarding system for secondary school. That brought everybody together. 
and made us a better country out of what we have now. My question is, the right to information law, when is it coming out? The right to information, as far as I'm concerned, it is not a government's problem. It is Parliament. Parliament of Ghana has seized the document called right to information, and they have been discussing it clause by clause. People have made amendments. The last time I checked, there are about 200 or so amendments. People must be free to ex express their opinion. It is not the president who can go and tell parliament, I want it today. Of course, then we don't have a democracy. So everybody here should excite his or her parliamentarian and ask, when will you do or when will you pass the right to the information bill? It is with parliament. And parliament is not the executive. So we shouldn't blame a party for it. Let's blame our parliamentarians and encourage them to pass it. After pursuing masters to get back home, there is no work to do. So what is the agenda? What are you doing about that? So that we wouldn't just go back here with all the degrees and we wouldn't find work that we can do that will commensurate with what we have achieved. I know a lot of us travel outside the country for better education and we stay back because there's nothing to do. Uh, so it's pretty much asked my question. The question, what, is it, what, what do you have for me, is a defeatist question. It means that all your life you've set up somebody should give you a job to do. What about what you can contribute to the society? It, we should drop away from that mentality that I've been, I went to do masters in maths. So I can only work in uh, IBM, because there's no IBM in Ghana. So when you do maths, you should be doing software application to influence change in Ghana. Everybody's course here, there's no job. If you expect that is the government that is going to employ you. But what can you also bring to the table? That is why I said you have to come and you have to come and rock the system. When we talk about the diaspora, we talk, we basically divide the diaspora into two basic groups. Ghanaians living outside one diaspora. And those, they refer to themselves now as the unique African group, which is those who were sold into slavery and, you know, have all those long-term relationships with Ghana. So the year of return, as a whole year devoted to celebrating, commemorating these 400 years of slavery, is really to do with those who live, you know, that group of diasporians, African-American. That is different from the Ghanaian living outside, which is the recent Ghanaian who has come to live here or through, you know, um, living here, have given birth to kids who are also living here. Those are different people altogether. But what I said is that even though the year of return relates to those African Americans, for them coming home, it is also an opportunity for if you are there, to come and network with some of them to see what business opportunities you can find for yourself. Some of those people who came on the full cycle were not just artists and film stars and all the people. I had the opportunity to interact with them. Some of them were investment bankers. Some of them were technologists. Some of them were business people looking for opportunity to also what, have long-term relationship with Ghana. You have an enormous task. You are not only helping yourself, not helping your community, you are helping your country. So you've started something which is really big and you don't appreciate how enormous task you have. So you have to dedicate yourself. What I leave with you is this. My door, 12 Gold Square Chambers, is open to all the students. You pop in. My door is open, but my mind is not closed. My mind too is open. So you pop in, especially the law students, and you can have one or two examples or a lead. I wish you all the best, and as they say, 
United we stand, divided we vanish. Thank you. Dreaming Joseph, dreaming Joseph, tell me what is true. Dreams are dreams when you sleep, but do they all come true? Your dream is life. Your dream is hope to help you understand the one above calls on you some special job to do. Your dreams may not unfold the way you thought they would. The woes that greet you on the way prepare you for your role. Appointed in love by him who will make your dreams come true. So when you find your journey long, which makes you sad and blue, recall your dreams and there do hope that someday they will come true. The journey between your dream and you may be a long and winding road, but believe in the giver of dreams who lives above. He will make all your dreams come true. So happy to be dreamers. Thank you very much. The Scholastic Secretariat appreciates the sacrifice of all of us who have made it here today as either guest speakers or invited personalities. Special thanks goes to the Ghana High Commission in the UK for agreeing to co-sponsor all this important program. The work you have done in bringing all of us here in UK is absolutely incredible. And the effort of all stakeholders here, your contributions to the success of this program has been very phenomenal. And to those of you who have traveled far and near to participate in this program, I say, Akwaba. Your presence is an inspiration which bears ample testimony to your desire to ensure the success of NUXA UK. The theme for the conference, mobilizing Ghanaian students in the UK, engineering the rebirth of our national vision, freedom, justice, unity, and development, has been carefully chosen to drum home the critical role of the Ghanaian diaspora in the national development agenda of His Excellency the President. The current transition in the life cycle as scholars is most prominent compared to all stages of life. It is at this stage that one has to learn life issues, how to tackle and make a beautiful life. This stage does not only help one grow, but also decides national development. Ghana belongs to us, and behoves on all of us to make it a better place, even for the unborn generations. For any people group to mobilize for nation building, there must be a common denominator by which we all think and do things together. Please allow me to mention just one or two. Identity. You are Ghanaian no matter what country you become exposed to. So don't lose your cultural identity. It's a key commitment to national building. Culture and tradition. With all our powerful academic credentials, without refining and embracing our cultural and traditional values, it will be difficult to see a sustainable vision, so I implore you to have such debates in your meetings. The language. Love the language. Love the music. We have Azonto dance. We have Adua. We have uh, all this wonderful uh, cultural stuff that Ghana is exporting to other nations. We need to embrace it. Religion. We can't pretend our belief system has no bearing on the way we govern or make decisions. The French Renaissance, German Reformation, Industrial Revolution in Great Britain, the role of the Puritans in shaping the United States, all had religious undertones. So what you believe is who you are. In national building, there will always be things that will discourage you to be strong. So I encourage you to be strong. Government will always place a lot of demand on students in the name of you are the future leaders. Rightly so, therefore, I urge you to be patriotic and think about pursuing the national building agenda. But equally, hold government to account 
no need for unnecessary complaining. It's not patriotic when foreign nationals who start business in Ghana are given 10 years tax break and a Ghanaian has to pay tax from day one. It's not patriotic when foreign companies like British Airways or Vodafone exploit your citizens with ridiculous airfares or expensive internet data and these abuses are, allow are allowed to continue without checks. It's not patriotic when you buy a car of say 5,000 you have to pay around 10,000 pounds in duties, etc. But regardless of all these challenges, you are empowered to pursue the agenda of nation building, and so we should. Our nation or our national vision is not for the elite few to dictate, but for the dedicated majority like yourselves. So you are doing the right thing by coming together to start and get that conversation going. NUXA as an association, your vitality and, uh, and contribution to the nation's development should be pitched at a level higher than partisan politics. And I hope that for your survival, uh, you would also be investing in your human capital resource. I've spent much of my time studying uh, the development and leveraging of human capital resource in countries as diverse as Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, Taiwan. And um, these are countries without national, uh, natural resources. You hear Ghanaian politicians, Ghanaian leaders talking about our natural resources. We've moved from an era of comparative advantage to an era of competitive advantage. Okay. So when we hear talk about natural resources, I will urge you to ignore that talk and think about yourself. Whether you like it or not, my thesis to you is that you are, my thesis to you, whether you like it or not, is that you are self-employed, okay? You are self-employed. And I say you are self-employed because you have, a cap, you have human capital and you can develop this human capital, leverage it through the pursuit of meaningful careers. There are three competences that you need to have if you are to survive in a very competitive global marketplace. Okay, your sense of patriotism should always drive you to Ghana. But at the same time, you are a member of a global marketplace. Think about the skills that you have and the value that you add. Okay, and it is this value that will enhance your dignity as a human being. Okay, making contributions, knowing whom to contact, uh, knowing why you are doing whatever you are doing, and also developing the know-how. The skills that you acquire here will be good, but the lifespan of ideas, competences, tend to be very short these days, okay? As self-employed, think about yourself as selling a product. And you, being self-employed, you are also an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs take risks, they innovate, and they look and, and they look, look for and exploit opportunities. These are the sort of things that will mark you out as a contributing <laughs> member of society. And I encourage you to pursue your studies with all vigor. It's possible to do so much. There are very few African academics or black academics in the UK. Okay. You can join them or you can go to Ghana. If you are in management and business, we have an association of African Af an African, African Academy of Management. We are engaged in capacity building across universities in Africa. Last year, we were at U uh, KNUST uh, to develop the faculty there so that they can do research, meaningful research. We also have a journal, uh, the African Journal of Management, of which I'm one of the associate editors. If you are an academic and you submit your papers to us, you get very constructive feedback. We are hoping to a side interest in management scholarship in Africa. This is the knowledge that entrepreneurs would need to use if they are moving to our part of the world. What skills do we have that will make us attractive? We are moving forward as Ghanaians, hoping to build a nation. Okay. There are no political points to be scored, putting one government down and elevating yours. We are all working towards building a Ghana which is fit for purpose. Thank you. Can I also add my voice to the many, many congratulatory messages to Nuxa? Uh, you've done excellent work, and I think it's always encouraging 
to see the young ones coming together to bat for the country, Ghana. The advice that I give you, I was a student once in this country, is that please study. The many, many, many students who've walked through our offices because their visas have been revoked or curtailed because they failed to make progress or attended institutions which were not licensed or those which were licensed but have lost their license because of one reason or the other or that they failed to meet the necessary attendance and lectures. It's very important that the unique opportunity that you've been given, you make use of it so that you become useful citizens to our country, Ghana. I wish you all the best in your new endeavor, and we are there to support you. I'm happy to be a mentor to those of you who are willing to be mentored. During the frenzied process of um, organizing this event, I saw a post that questioned what a traditional ruler had to do with a student conference. And here's my response. Number one, I'm here. I can assure you that I'm a highly educated woman, not just a traditional ruler. I'm very much involved in a lot of things educational in Ghana and here, but I won't go into them because we don't have time. Recently, we've heard a lot about um, the year of return and the diaspora minister spoke about the full circle event. One of the things that I took away from that, and that has to do with how traditional rulership can educate, not just from an academic perspective, although we do, and I'll come to that, but education from a traditional you know, viewpoint. Um, somewhere in the eastern region, in Akwamu, the group of celebrities that went to Ghana where, you know, there was a debate that was held in their honor at the palace of Akomo, Hini. And during this process, one of the people that was honored was called Michael J. White, who is a Hollywood actor. He was given the name Odupon, and that means his appellation actually was the tree with strong roots that doesn't fear the storm. The significance of that was not lost on somebody like me because arising out of that were com negative comments as to why this happened to him and these were from people like you and I. And here's his response. He said, if Queen Elizabeth had given me an honor, I would not have cherished it as much as that honor bestowed on me by the Akwamohini. And why do I mention this? What has that got to do with education? Do you see this gentleman who came to Ghana tracing his roots has been educated from a traditional standpoint in accepting his heritage, honoring it, and setting it above what we consider to be superior. And that is the role of traditional rulership in education because education, you see, is not necessarily only academic. Now, someone like me, I said to you earlier that I'm involved in various things, and one of them is we set up projects in Ghana where we go to schools and we put libraries in the rural areas. In these schools, we encourage young uh, kids to the kids to learn to read and we award them when they progress and we've been involved in other initiatives notably NUXA and I have to say before NUXA we were involved in um, inaugurating the African version of the students union for lack of time I won't go on for any longer but I'd like you to take away one thing, whenever you think of education and tradition, they are not mutually exclusive. Whenever you think of the role of traditional rulership in education, I'd like you to visualize me speaking to you today. Education is supposed to take you closer 
to who you really are, not lead you away from yourself. And the way things have turned out in the world, it seems to me it is crucial now that Africans redefine who they are. All our lives, we've been taught by other people who they think we are. Truth is, they haven't got a clue. This is something you, your generation, you must redefine who you are and reimagine the kind of future you can have. So, I, I'm quite certain, because I've lived in England most of my life, that the 21st century is the century of Africa. But it won't happen if you think somebody is going to give it to you. So, this requires that you guys decide what will fly for you and what won't fly for you. I came here in my mid-twenties, and one thing I realized since my arrival here is my identity. I didn't take it seriously when I was back home until I got here. I realized who I am. You cannot let somebody tell your story for you. I mean, there have been so many speeches here today, ambassador, and also and so forth. Um, Papa Osuakuma is ambassador, but we are also ambassadors. We are all ambassadors. We represent our country and our continent. Others labored and we shared the glory. When the education minister spoke, he mentioned a list of heads of states and a list of individuals who have shined and put Ghana higher. Your job today from now is what can we do to add to those people's work? Ghana Union is behind you. We are here to support you. If for any reason we can be of help, we are so uh, in a position to do so. And we will coordinate resources to support your cause. I would urge you all to look around in your communities. Join a Ghana union in your community. By all means, join the National Union of Ghanaian Students to consolidate your student status. But remember this, join or encourage the formation of a Ghana union in your community to confirm your identity in this country as a Ghanaian. We uh, at the NUS have a, um, in our office, we have a, a poster which says if students are co cooperating for today, there is hope for tomorrow. And I think that's absolutely key. Um, and it would have been uh, nice to hear, I know for the conscience of time, nice to hear from some of the students in the room, but it's really, really important that when students are working together and cooperating and building a movement, that is when change really happens, because they have the new ideas and they have the, the, the real ability to inspire and to take that long view. We, Africans, are very underrepresented where psychological support, like the real low-level psychological support is concerned, but very overrepresented where psychiatry is concerned. Why? Ghanaian students, let's come together and form a mental well-being association in any university that we are. I hope that you take this message seriously so that we are able to give those people coming hope. Tell them what to do, what to expect. It is no exaggeration to say that we are all in a unique place in history as we stand at the cusp of exciting new opportunities bequeathed to us by our forebears. Now, let me also conclude on an inspiring note by reference to George Mpanga. He was also a poet. George Mpanga grew up in Neesden, somewhere near this area, before going to the University of Cambridge. He said, and I quote, my school was diverse and Cambridge was prominently middle and upper class. So that, in itself, became my first education. I am grateful, he said, to have been in an environment where everyone loved their subject. I repeat, I am grateful to have been in an environment where everyone loved their subject. Studying sociology was a therapy 
because it was so relevant to my upbringing. I started thinking about relationships, people and society differently. And he concluded, it helped me look at my community objectively and get over the anger I was feeling. Thank you very much. Go well and God bless. We thank all of you for sacrificing your time, your comfort, your convenience to be with us today. And we thank all those who contributed in many ways, financial-wise, material-wise, and any means that you contributed to making this conference a success. I request every one of you to just raise up your hands, join me in a very silent prayer so that the Almighty God help us to make this association a very important one so that each one of us become an exemplar, each one of us become what a light wherever you find yourself because whenever there's total darkness, even a tiny light can still be identified. Amen. Thank you very much.